Tēnā koutou, koutou. Um, Before I start, I'd like to acknowledge the passing of Hono. Um, he's one of our community. Um, Hono um, was brought to us about three, four years ago by one of our local MPs to um, our peer support. Um, we navigated him into some temporary housing and then from there he was supported into Housing First. Hono has been an, an integral part of LifeWise. He's been the face of LifeWise. Um, he was involved actively um, until last year with us in terms of um, peer support and some of our social enterprise. Hono's tani is today. I decided not to come, go to that, because this is so important. Sorry. Advocacy is really important, and I want to share that message with you. Um, and I made the decision to, to come and tell my story and their story here. Our advocacy work within LifeWise, um, we do it all across. We're involved in the system in terms of voice opportunities, submissions, reports. We're organisational. We have our advisory group. We co-create. We also have got a lived experience strategy. We've got advocacy for others through our peer support volunteers, and we support others to gain their own self-advocacy through confidence, through opportunities. Throughout all of that, we make sure that it's a lived experience, their voices and their input into that. It's a journey. We're not doing it perfectly, um, and, and, and I'm constantly learning from it. Um, Merge Community was established probably about two years ago, is, is funded um, and supported by J.R. McKenzie, another reason why it was so important that we came here. Um, and we're doing peer support, social enterprise and community. And we work around the homelessness sector, rough sleeping, ex rough sleeping, and those marginalised who may have um, more risk of becoming homeless. So my advocacy journey from system to frontline. Well, look, I'm privileged. And, and I think until probably in my 30s or 40s, you know, I was naive around advocacy. Um, I was able to have what I wanted. I was able to articulate what I needed. I was able to, um, you know, pick up the phone and say this is not good enough. And if I wanted to, I could get involved in things if I passionately felt about them. Most of the time, because of my privilege, I was like, hmm, life is really good. Um, I was then lucky to be, um, get involved in the MSD, um, and I had a lot of learning there through those 12 years, um, involved in terms of community and how we can advocate for what they wanted to do, and I was one of those facilitators. But also, um, I came involved in co-design and involved in the redesign of budgeting services, where we actually shifted from just a budget sheet to actually the importance of financial resilience. And really in that we saw the importance of system change and what's needed. And you have to work with people that you don't agree with, they rub you up in the wrong way. Um, and, but that's so, so important. And through co-design we brought the voices of the people impacted on that. And we also, part of that system change, made sure that we actually included um, some advocacy. And that's why we, um, the MSD ended up funding um, a sort of budgeting association organisation now known as FinCap because they need to be the voice to say, this is not working. Because they didn't have that ability to do that and it took 20 or 30 years before things needed to change. Um, but also I was, got frustrated in MSD and so it was time to go. And, um, and I feel really blessed to have worked in, in the front line for the two years. I'm privileged to work with people who society see as um, um, on the fringes and walk past them, but they are full of strength and skills and talents. And, and I think, you know, these are people who have experienced colonisation. We've got to say that word. Definitely colonisation has really impacted, especially on, 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 on the Māori people and their culture, they might be marginalised for past mistakes in the prison system, um, they're kept in policies that, that keep them poor and um, their voices are not heard. 
These are the people that we have got to make sure that they have an opportunity to have a say and, and, and advocate for what they need. They have got the lived experience. They know what needs to change because they're living it. Why advocacy for social change? It's all about power. You know, this is the thing we've got to sit with, especially for European, white, middle class. We have the power. We've got to share it. You know, I worked in MSD, and there were things that I couldn't change because I was one person. Even internally in an organization, it's very hard. We often celebrated when an organization campaigned about something that pushed for something that we could actually need to change. We have a duty to create opportunities to share the power. If we want a democracy, if we want to be inclusive and healthy lives, we need to include everybody in the system who's infected or impacted on by those issues. This world is really crazy at the moment. We're seeing it more shift to an autocratic society. For a democracy, we need to make sure everybody's voices is heard. And advocacy is a key part of that. Those on the fringes have the answers. They're experiencing it from day to day about the benefit system, about the homelessness system, about the prison system. They know what needs to change. So I'll just give you a little bit of um, insight into it, in terms of what LifeWise has done. I'm going to give you examples. So, um, you know, J.R. McKenzie has funded us, but has really allows us to have that flexibility. Now, through my work in MSD, I, we found out that there was a bit of a limit around earning $80. I couldn't actually do anything about that. I was a lone voice, you know, and they said, oh, you know, it's only a little thing. Let it, let it go. And then we, came, then we came back, then I came into LifeWise. And through our work of trying to get people to earn a little, we found, ah, oh, as soon as I earn $80 before tax, I'm actually going to get pen penalized and it's worse. And so this was a huge barrier to try and engage people into some form of mahi, especially if they hadn't worked for a while. Uh, you know, and then the debt's taken off it. I've had just somebody recently work for four hours, get paid, and ended up with $15. You try and convince her that's worthwhile going for four hours' work. So what we did is we um, captured some of those stories, we did some data, and Maura, our CE, said, hey, this, go for it, go for it. So we were lucky at that time, the welfare reform, reform were looking at um, submissions. We developed our own submission, but we also hosted a forum at um, the Merge Cafe. We called it Stuck in the 80s because the $80 has not changed for 30 years. Um, and we hosted a forum, and that was where that advisory group took those voices, took that experience, it changed their mindset, they took that $80 the whole way through. We haven't changed it. It's been a little bit. We suggested it should rise up to 125. But what's been great is then some bigger organizations, Child Welfare Advisory, have taken that and made it a key part of what needs to change around the benefit. Um, so things haven't changed, but we think we've caused a bit of a ripple. And, and I will still go on about it. We need to change it for the better. We also do peer support advocacy. We have supported 500 people through um, six or eight volunteers who've all got lived experience, who support people through to get to um, the right benefit at, at um, work and income, to actually advocate for their electricity bill to be repaid of $1,000, to go to a landlord and, and, and um, get their um, bond back, um, all sorts of aspects. And that, for them, is empowering. Um, We've seen people who've only been supported advocacy once, and then they have been become advocates for others. So I could, again, talk for a while, as you can see, passionate about it. So what would make the difference? Well, I mean, I was looking at this in terms of speaking to you as philanthropics, in terms of where you would be best um, funding. Fund people to drive and hold the space, especially for big issues as, as, as my colleagues here, in terms of, um, you know, in terms of um, criminal justice. 
We need to support, you know, in terms of fund Māori for Māori, you know. Um, Grassroots workshops would be really important, you know. Everyone, especially those who are in that circle of poverty, you know, there's so much chaos going in their lives. Actually, some kai, some transport, some time. You know, it might take you three or four times to get a group of people together, work with the organisations that have got that trust. You know, I was able to have bring together probably about 15 people with lived experience around homelessness for a policy um, to inform the national strategy around homelessness. But that was because of the relationships, the time, the food, all the work we'd done before. Um, I think we need to be having the conversation around sharing the power and that expectations. And, and that's something that I have constantly have to challenge myself and, and my community challenging me. You know, power is that invisible thing in terms of institutional power, you know, our middle class power. You know, we all have to have that. We need to create that environment to have those conversations. We need to support those new to the lived experience voice, other organizations in terms of NGOs, help them form that, you know, because they're going to have to give some of their power away. And that's, you know, a little bit sort of nervous. Grow community leaders. And then also, I think, really, in terms of a space for advocates to learn from each other um, and, and, again, training, workshops, so that people are well-informed overall. Um, I think we need to just advocate for advocacy and power sharing. Don't, don't be afraid of it. It's an important part of our society, for a healthy society. Um, especially with, you know, I learnt communications 30 years ago and um, media was seen as the fourth state. That's crumbling away. So we need the people power. We need people, people power to be educated and informed to knock on the door of MPs and policies to say things need to change. So advocacy, it can be healing and empowering for the individual. For the organisation, it creates new opportunities. It opens people's eyes. For the system, it is a vital lever for system change. For all of us, it's critical for a healthy and functioning society. Thank you.